on the Windows side, I've got my Rad Studio IDE, which has support for uh, Delphi and C++, uh, and I've got some favorite projects uh, stored in the middle here that I can use to quick launch for my applications. And then if I switch over to the Macintosh side, I've got my, uh, my Macintosh uh, 10.6.8 that's running as the main uh, operating system. And again, the Windows 64-bit is, is hosted with VMware Fusion for the Macintosh. Here's my platform uh, server. So PA server is running in a terminal window. And you just I have a link to it here. And I've launched it, and it asks me for a password if I gave it one. I don't need one. And then it's just listing on port 64211. And I type the S command here, which, uh, which tells, shows me where the scratch directory, where the IDE will send files that are needed on the Macintosh to debug and run my program. Uh, it has to save those somewhere in the Macintosh, and the PA server is listening in a folder called scratch-dir. So there's the infrastructure of what I'm, uh, what I'm running on here. So with that, I'll switch back to the Windows ID uh, running in VMware. We have lots of different project types. Uh, I've customized my file new menu. You can do that yourself by hitting the customize option in the file new menu. What I've done is I've placed the sort of my commonly used uh, VCL and, and FireMonkey uh, project, uh, new project uh, template starts uh, as menu items there. So I've got my... Uh, Delphi ones here, my C++ builder, and then I do a lot of DataSnap REST demos, so I have DataSnap and REST application for both Delphi and C++ builder. But then underneath each one of these, we have uh, uh, all the, the project wizards that are available in the, in the gallery, so FireMonkey 3D, HD, uh, you know, console application, control panel application, all of these things. Uh, if you're doing Windows only, then ActiveX, things like that, and all the supporting files underneath. Same thing here, building console app, control panel, FireMonkey. Here's the addition of the iOS versions because we have that support through Delphi and Free Pascal. So, so if we want to build, for example, just a, uh, a simple C++ builder console application, uh, we'll just say it's C++ and we don't want any special uh, framework that it might use. We've got a simple main application that runs. You'll notice a new node if you've got previous versions of our products called Target Platform. In here, you can specify additional platforms that are available. In the case of C++, we have 32-bit Windows and Mac OS X. So we just say, if we want a Macintosh version of this console app, just add a Macintosh to it. And then there, you can assign a remote profile. The remote profile simply says, where's the host operating system? So in my case, it's, it's on this IP address. Uh, that's its type. Uh, port number 64211, that's what the platform assistant is looking on and what, if I had a password or not, and an additional uh, information that is needed to, to be sent over to the platform assistant uh, is there for you as well. And again, same thing here, go back to, uh, to other, go to Delphi, let's build a console application for Delphi, All right? and then uh, let's go and, uh, and run this one. And if we go, now go over to our Macintosh, Here's the console, it just says hello world, and it's waiting for input in the terminal window because it was console app. And I just hit enter and, and then I'm back and the application completes. So target platform is the first part, choosing the target being Windows and Macintosh. Again, console apps, let's do a new application, let's choose a high definition FireMonkey application. Here's a simple one, uh, let's put up a button. All right, and then when we click the button, we'll just say button one dot text property uh, equals uh, 42 and we'll uh, we'll run this on Windows and it changed the caption to 42 we'll set its target to uh, to 64-bit Windows and let's go and run it compile and run it 64-bit Windows okay 64-bit and target platform uh, OS 10 and again whichever is the activated target platform is there for you so let's go and run this one and it deploys that, including any debugging information. And now we have a, a button that's just uh, does the right thing. For debugging, either in Delphi or C++, we'll just hit the put a breakpoint, uh, click uh, debug. 
and let's go over to the uh, let's see okay here it is so we'll click on the button and then go back over and now oh sorry did I not click on it there we go we'll go back over to our ID and notice it stopped at the breakpoint and then we have a full access to evaluate modify you know if we step over this code it's actually sending the command over to the Macintosh to uh, to step out of it and so on and now the text uh, property has the value 42 because we did the assignment right so everything we can do if we bring up the you know the CPU viewer for example then uh, in the debug window the uh, you know what we're seeing is the CPU window over on the Macintosh side because that's where the application is actually running. It's running over here, uh, right? And so it's running, waiting for us to do things, still waiting for the breakpoint to finish. And then if we uh, complete through the breakpoint, then going back to the uh, window, it closes and everything is fine. So full support for, uh, for debugging, uh, full support for deploying your applications on... Uh, on Windows and Macintosh using Delphi and C++ using the target platform node and the ID support. All right, let's let's take a look at a few other applications that you can build. Here's a uh, let's uh, bring up a C++ FireMonkey application and target platform. Let's start it on Windows first. <clears throat> this has a lot of different uh, components. It's got an ellipse, a circle. It's got some text. Notice with FireMonkey we have. Uh, we have container ship not only at the form level, but you can stick uh, visual components inside of other components. Um, so this uh, this text property is inside of uh, this ellipse, and so everything in FireMonkey is a container in VCL. If you're used to that, uh, let's see, forms, frames, and panels and data modules can contain things. Um, in FireMonkey, a list box can contain text. A list box can contain buttons and images and all sorts of things. You'll see some of those in action as well. Uh, we've got some uh, some uh, some of these animations that we have. And an animation, in this case, this was a path animation, which is taking going to take this rounded rectangle and it's going to move it along some path. And the path data that you have here is. Uh, is you say move to a certain uh, coordinate and then move to the next one and move to the next one move to the next point and so on and that will cause the uh, the uh, this rounded rectangle button to uh, to follow this path that's defined and it has since it has the loop property turned on once it gets to the end it'll it'll continue that animation forever until we turn off uh, looping for that animation uh, floating point animation for changing uh, the fl a floating point property in this case the rotation angle so the property of this uh, of this uh, rounded rectangle we're going to change its rotation angle so around it, this ellipse has a property called rotation angle the other way to know if something can be animated if a property can be animated in the object inspector if it's got a little film strip icon that says that there's an animator if we go over in uh, in the uh, tool palette, you see the different animators that we have uh, to animate color, a gradient, float, a rectangle, a bitmap, a list of bitmaps, uh, the color key or float key, and path animation. So if it has a little, uh, a little uh, uh, film strip, then that property can be animated. And again, this application that uses FireMonkey and all these special effects uh, works on. Uh, on 32-bit windows and on Macintosh as well. Uh, bitmap animation, you can also specify uh, what it's triggered by. <coughs> Sorry. So for example, this bitmap animation, uh, it's going to animate uh, if I mouse over it, and then also if I move off it, if I'm not off it, then it's going to do the inverse animation, whatever that might mean. So you can set these triggers, or you can just turn the animation uh, on and off as well. Uh, by setting the enabled property uh, true or false. And then we have all the, the special effects as well. So here's all the 
blurring and glowing and swirling and magnifying and we'll see that in action a little bit later in a demo. Uh, transitions, so if you want to dissolve one form, the contents of a form from one contents to another, you can have a dissolve transition or a crumple transition or whatever it might be. Again, full support for all of this. And all these, these effects are done by the GPU, so it offloads the CPU. The shader language implementation will do that for you. So let's run the C++ app, FireMonkey application on Windows first, and you'll just see it in action. Uh, here we've got uh, this following the path, and this appearing and disappearing, and changing the rotation angle, changing a gradient, doing, uh, here's the, notice we're hovering over when the mouse is over. Uh, then we get a special effect by saying, gee, you know, maybe you hover over that reminds you that this folder, if you click on it, is going to be the thing that uh, that's going to be active. So you can have those kinds of effects happening. And again, if I set the Mac profile and hit run, and then I switch to my, it'll compile it first for Macintosh. It's deploying it over to the Macintosh. And so we can go over here. Now I'm on my Macintosh, and here's my Fire Monkey. Uh, animation. Again, we have the triggering of the hover effect uh, on the folder and these animations and path animations. So, uh, same code, just changing the target platform uh, in C++ using FireMonkey under the covers. Uh, you know, the code is uh, basically all done in the, in the objects themselves. Uh, in the FireMonkey implementation, it's all done through properties. There's no code other than uh, instantiating the form and starting the application running. 